Hey everyone, Sunil here with DataLocker, and I want to take some time to talk about our secure storage solutions. DataLocker was founded in 2007 with the vision of being simply secure, and over the past decade we've focused on delivering advanced encryption solutions that protect your sensitive data in the hands of a workforce that is increasingly mobile. Our solutions are designed to fit your exact needs and be easy enough to use so that your entire staff, not just your IT team, can store, transport, or securely share confidential data. Along with ease of use and simplicity, our devices and our management consoles are built to be a cost-effective way for you to comply with HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, DHS initiatives, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, GLB, GDPR, and any other directives. Now, why is all that so important? The encrypted or secure USB market is rising at an astonishing rate due to its ease of use and implementation of new legislation around the world. Users find that the speed, cost, and convenience of physical USB storage devices are frankly irreplaceable. And in addition, USB devices are still the leading solution when used in non-standard computing environments, such as copy machines, smart TVs, field data collection devices, ATM machines, voting machines, stuff like that. As such, companies across both the globe and industries still find compelling reasons to utilize portable media devices as part of their everyday workflow, which honestly, that makes sense. USB flash drives and portable hard drives are now smaller, faster, and have higher capacities than ever before. However, over the years, USB drives have developed a reputation as a security threat. Flash drives specifically with their small size and ease of use allow users to store sensitive data with significant risk of loss or unauthorized access. And this includes users from any industry or role, hospital employees, law firm associates, bank employees or representatives, employees of government branches, or even military contractors or personnel. Regardless of the industry, in each of these cases, it's vital that the confidential information is not only protected, but that the full security of the device that's being used is taken into consideration on every level. That's where Data Locker comes in. We offer devices that are validated up to FIPS 140-2 level three standards, yet they're still easy enough for anyone in your organization to use. And our central management platform, Safe Console, allows the IT administrator of your organization to control access and usage of the user's devices on a granular level. When they're paired together, Safe Console enables your organization to control access to the devices, enforce security policies for each of the devices, assist users with resetting their lost or forgotten passwords, simplify compliance auditing, and ultimately protect against a data breach by remotely wiping the device if it's lost or stolen. Now, here's the best part. You can accomplish all of this without hindering the actual productivity of your employees. Which I'm sure you're asking, okay, how do we actually do all that? Well, I'm really glad you asked that because that makes it easy to transition to the next portion of this video. We're gonna take a look at a few of our devices and talk through some of their features, and then we'll do a high level walkthrough of Safe Console and what all it allows you to control. But before we jump into that, this overview is probably gonna feel like it's going by really quickly. So press pause on this video, grab a pen and a piece of paper, and just make a note of the different features that you hear about that you'd like to learn a little bit more about. At the end of this video, we've got our website and contact information that you can use to reach out to us and we'll help answer any questions that you've had along the way. But for now, hit pause, grab your pen and paper, and then come right back. You can go on, I'll wait right here. Welcome back. Let's start with the Sentry K300, which is a platform independent micro SSD and flash drive format that incorporates both an OLED display and a keypad. The display supports true alphanumeric password-based authentication, and the full-featured onboard menu allows you to configure both settings and policies directly on the device. Also, because authentication is done on the device itself, that means the Sentry K300 can be used in anything that can read a USB mass storage device. There's no special software or drivers that are required. With the built-in power supply, you can even boot from the device using Windows to Go or a portable Linux operating system. A couple key security features to highlight for this device as I mentioned, it supports true alphanumeric characters for strong passwords. It's also got an admin account and a user account, which allows for varying levels of access. You can enforce read-only mode before connecting to a machine. And it has built-in brute force hack defense, where the device will securely erase itself and old data after 20 incorrect password attempts. Rapid secure wipe for erasing and resetting the device and device auto lock, which will automatically lock the device after a set time of inactivity. Here's what the unlock process looks like. Simply powered on by holding the button at the bottom of the device. Once the screen comes up, you enter your password using the keypad, 
and press the Enter key at the bottom of the device. From there, you can navigate through the menu using the up and down arrows and the enter and back buttons. Again, changing settings from the password policy, the device auto lock settings, or even enabling the boot mode. The Sentry K300 comes in capacities from eight gigs all the way up to 256 gigs. And again, contact information and further details will be included at the end of this video. For those of you interested in a higher capacity device, you'll wanna check out the DL3. The DL3 comes in two versions, the DL3 and the DL3 FE, which stands for FIPS edition. The DL3 device offers the same versatility in that once it's unlocked, you can use it with anything that can read a USB mass storage device. Obviously the form factor changes the footprint of the device, but this also increases the potential storage capacity that you can get. The capacities start at 500 gigs and go all the way up to four terabytes in a solid state drive. Now, we're gonna look at one more device, the Sentry One. This device is FIPS 140-2 Level 3 certified and also includes a tamper evident seal for physical security. And just to be clear, the entire drive is FIPS certified, not just the controller. Now the Sentry One is an encrypted, a hardware encrypted device that is unlocked through an application on the device itself, meaning that you need to connect it to a Windows, Mac, or Linux machine in order to launch the application where you can then enter your password. Let's take a look at how that works. You simply connect the device to your machine, launch the client software, and enter the connection token, which is provided by your Safe Console administrator. You'll only need to go through these steps once for the initial registration. After that, you can simply log in using the password you create during the next step. From there, simply follow the prompts to create a password and complete the device registration. The Sentry One can also be purchased as a standalone device, but again, you can find those details at the end of this video. Once the device registration is complete, you'll see the secure partition can be found by clicking on the folder icon within the control panel, or by navigating to the now unlocked secure partition within Windows Explorer. At this point, all files within this partition are securely encrypted as soon as you save them here. Now that we got a device registered, let's take a look at how the device shows up within Safe Console. Let's start by taking a look at the dashboard. This is the default landing page for Safe Console, and you'll notice that the device we just connected shows up in the device audit widget with the files we just copied to it. You can also see the device's location plotted on the map based on the IP address of the machine that the device is connected to. Clicking on the device name brings up the device details pop-up, which shows the user the device is tied to, as well as the specific device information. Let's take a look at how all the devices show up within Safe Console. Here you can see the details about all the devices listed in your Safe Console server with the relevant information. These columns can be modified to display the information that you want to see. On the right-hand side, on the Actions button, you'll see that there's a number of remote actions that we can send. We can mark the device as lost. We can deny access, preventing anyone from logging into it. From here, we can also initiate a reset password to reset a password for a user, or we can also send a remote factory reset command, which will wipe all the data off the device if it's lost or stolen, or even get it ready for a new user. You can see the user account details by clicking on the username next to the device in question. A user account is created when registering a device, and a device is automatically assigned to that user account, which is based on their Windows user profile. Under the user details pop-up, you can see both the path where the user is located, as well as the policy that's assigned to the user. Let's take a look at all the policies. The policies are where you can configure the granular control for each of the devices within Safe Console. You can create a custom policy for each path within Safe Console and then assign users to those paths. For our case, we'll look at the default policy. Within the policy, you can configure settings based on the software version the device is running, 4.8, 6.x, DL3 devices, or port blocker, which we'll come back to that one in a minute. You can also change the view to see which policies apply to the different operating systems in use within your environment, either Windows or Mac. Just so you know, we're not gonna go through every section of this policy, but we'll hit up most of them. The user defaults allows you to control if the users are allowed to reset their devices or not. The anti-malware section allows you to activate the built-in anti-malware that is embedded on the partition. 
If enabled, the anti-malware utility scans all files going to and from the device, as well as all files currently on the device, as soon as it's unlocked. The device state configures how often devices must check in with the Safe Console server, which allows the devices to be used offline, just not in perpetuity. Devices can be used for a set period without connecting to the Safe Console server, but they must check in within the stated period in order to remain in use and for their status to not be changed. The password policy is where you can configure the password requirements of the device based on the password requirements of your organization. The remote password reset section, which is enabled by default, allows your administrator to provide remote password resets for your end users. The device audit section, just like the password reset section, is enabled by default as well and allows the devices to report file activity audits back to the Safe Console server where an admin can review them. More on that one in a minute. The last three sections are all related, so we're gonna take them a bit out of order. Trusted network can be used to restrict access to the devices based on a specific network location. For instance, you could define your trusted network as the internal network of your organization, thus restricting the policy so that devices are only allowed to unlock when connected to that network. Under geofencing, you can use geofencing to create a whitelist or blacklist of countries that your devices are allowed or maybe disallowed to be unlocked in. The third one, Zone Builder, which is the final piece, can be used to increase the ease of use of devices while not compromising their security. Just like Trusted Network and Geofence defines access based on network location, Zone Builder can define access based on certificates. Zone Builder can allow you to create a trust relationship between a device and a computer with a paired certificate. Once the computer has the paired certificate and is identified as trusted, the device can be configured to automatically unlock once plugged in without even prompting for a password. Okay, now that we've seen an overview of the policies, let's jump over to the device audits. The device audit logs show all the activity of devices within the Safe Console server. Each action, a device login, a file written to the device, an action taken by an administrator such as a password reset, is all recorded with the details of who, what, when, and where. These logs can be exported for further review or disabled altogether if so desired. A couple final things to point out regarding the Safe Console server settings. Under the General tab, you can configure settings regarding device registration, password resets, and the device and system log file settings. Further on down, you can configure SIM integration to monitor any event using an external event logging solution. And you'll also find a tab for single sign-on, allowing SSO integration. Safe Console is able to integrate with any SSO that supports the SAML2 protocol. Again, making it as simple as possible to get you up and running within your organization. Okay, deep breath. That was a whirlwind tour through Safe Console. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, this is a great solution for data locker encrypted devices, but how do I make sure that our company data is only being saved to Safe Console managed devices? and not just any old flash drive they happen to find during laundry day in the pocket of their jeans. That brings us to Port Blocker. Port Blocker is a desktop agent created by Data Locker that works in conjunction with our encrypted devices. And it's also managed by Safe Console. Port Blocker allows your IT administrators to control which mass storage devices are allowed to mount on an end user's workstation. That whitelist is set by policy within Safe Console and then pushed out to each individual endpoint. The installation and registration of the port blocker application can be scripted for mass deployment, and the policy is pre-configured to list all available Safe Console ready devices for easy whitelisting. You can also allow other devices by entering a device's unique vendor ID and product ID. Finally, as you get into Safe Console, if you get stuck, you can always hit up the Help tab on the left-hand side. Here you'll find the Deployment Wizard, the Quick Connect Guide, which includes both the connection token for your devices and instructions on how to register the different versions. And quick access to our customer support portal, the Safe Console Manual, and all the release notes. Well, there you have it. That's a high-level overview of Safe Console. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is where you'll find the contact information for people who can answer all of your questions. Well, maybe not all of them, but for sure the ones about Data Locker. Check out our website or send us an email at sales at datalocker.com with your questions and we'll get them answered. 
That's all I've got for today. Thanks so much for watching this video and seeing how Data Locker can help empower your organization by fulfilling the vision of being simply secure.